So for this video, we are preparing our serum and our plasma. So we are going to put our blood into three different tubes. We're gonna start with our white non-additive tube. And luckily it has a little line there that shows you where it should be filled. We wanna to get to at least 90% of that line. Then we're gonna do our red serum separator tube. Again, it has that line there for us. And then last, we would do our purple top EDTA tube. Again, it has a nice little line. So our lovely assistant, Jake, is gonna help us today. Wanna sit down, bud? Good boy. Good boy, handsome. All right. You are such a good boy. You are such a good boy. So we wanna insert our needle bevel up. This is epicopsi. Mm -hmm. And this is an amorphic rod. There we go. Great, 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 handsome. Oh, uh, look, this, is, this looks like a spirochete. This looks like Lyme disease, though. I mean, this is like a little antigen. This is the antigen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Good job, sweetheart. These are definitely the most white. Stay, stay, stay. Stay, stay, stay. Oh, stay, my friend. I know. I know. You are such a good boy. Good boy. Good job, handsome. All right. So now we would put our blood into our tubes. So again, we start with our non-additive. 90% of the way to that line. And we want to invert it. And then we want to do our serum separator too. And then make sure we're filling it to that line. And again, we want to invert it. And then into our small lavender top too. actually doesn't seem to be working so let me just switch it out for another two that one is possibly but we also want to do it before our blood clot okay so with our working vacutainer All set. Okay, and so since that little one didn't work, we'll use our big vacutainer. And again, we want to get it to at least 90% to that fill line. Okay, and now we're okay. So now that we've let our blood properly clot, um, we are going to rim the samples, just get rid of any um, kind of chunky bits of clots and then put them into our centrifuge to spin them. So, well, just taking the back end of a Q-tip, we just want to gently kind of get the excess bits off of the side there. And then discard that. That one in. Our purple top, do the same. I want to get the excess off of the edge, break up any large clots. Okay. And then our last one, our red top tube, our serum separator. Again, we want to, so we didn't have as many clots. Okay, so we'll put that into our centrifuge and then we will add another tube that's approximately the same amount full as the rest of them uh, to balance out in that fourth spot. And we will run our centrifuge. Um, our manufacturers, uh, 
direction, say we run it for 15 minutes. Uh, we can't change the speed on it, unfortunately, um, but we'll get that started. There it goes. Um, so we'll let that spin for 15 minutes and then we'll be able to harvest our serum and plasma. Okay, so now that our centrifuge has stopped, we'll take out our blood. So that's our red top serum separator. And as we can see, it's pretty hemolyzed. We'll discuss what that means in just a minute. And then our lavender top tube, again, pretty hemolyzed. And then our non-additive, also hemolyzed. So let's separate our serum and plasma, and then we can discuss things like hemolysis uh, and lipemia, um, some of the things that would cause it, why we see it sometimes in samples. So we'll start with our non-additive tube, and then we want to take our pipette, collect our serum, and insert it into the tube. It's hard to do it on video uh, so that you can see it and I can see it, but we want to gently, without disturbing our red blood cells. Um, actually, it might be easier if we did it that way. So our red blood cells are there at the bottom, and we want to be avoiding that. We just want our plasma. Okay, and we'll discard that. So now we just have our red blood cells for our white top and we have our plasma. We'll do it with our other two samples as well. So now our lavender top two. The fresh pipette. So we want to make sure again that we are getting the serum or the plasma rather, not disturbing the red blood cells. So very gently with our pipette, we suck it up from this tube and then put it into our plain transparent tube. There we go. So now all that's left is our red blood cells. can see we have our plasma there. And last but not least, we have our serum separator tube. So this one's a bit easier to see. So we want to, again, make sure we're taking the serum, not disturbing the red blood cells. a little bit easier because of the serum separator in between, but you still want to be gentle because that separation gel uh, can be sucked up. So that just leaves us with our red blood cells. And then our transparent tube with our serum. Um, and now we'll discuss hemolysis and lipemia. Okay, so now that we have separated um, and transferred our serum and plasma, we could talk a little bit about some of the things that we see. Um, first one is hemolysis. Um, when we get a hemolyzed sample, uh, the serum or the plasma is more of a red tinge. It can be um, anywhere from just a little bit of pink to you know very clearly red. And it's, um, it's the result of a breakdown um, and of damaged red blood cells 
this can happen for a few reasons. Um, a really rough blood draw can, uh, can cause some hemolysis. Inappropriate transfer into the tube, um, like pressing on the plunger, can cause some damage to the red blood cells and then result in hemolysis. Um, and then there are also medical conditions like um, immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, um, where you might see some hemolysis in those samples. Um, and it can sometimes skew uh, the results of your lab work, so it's really not ideal and it's something that you definitely want to avoid. The other very common thing that we see um, are lipemic samples um, with lipemia, the serum or the plasma is usually a milky white color. Um, sometimes if it's both lipemic and hemolyzed, it will almost be like a pale pink color, um, but it's more opaque. Uh, whereas hemolysis, uh, the serum and the plasma is still pretty clear. With lipemia, it, it tends, up, tends to be um, more opaque. You can't see through it. It's caused by a few different things. Um, some of the main things that we see are um, fat in the blood, um, triglycerides to be specific, um, very heavy patients. Uh, we'll see that in sometimes. Um, also, if a patient ate, um, especially a fatty meal right before they came in, um, if they haven't been properly fasted, then we can see uh, lipemia then. Um, and it does skew the results. Uh, it tends to raise glucose, um, among other things. And um, another problem that it could cause is if you are running blood work in-house, um, sometimes it doesn't run in the standard machines if it's too lipemic. Uh, the machine can't quite read it and can't quite process it. So we have a photo of common uh, serum colors. Um, it's a stock photo, so it's not, you know, 100%. Um, so we, there we have our, um, our lipemic sample. It's that milky white opaque. Here would be a hemolyzed sample. It's still clear, but it's red. Um, and then if this is supposed to be a clear, normal sample, then this would be um, another uh, issue that we sometimes see, which is an icteric sample. Um, I think this is supposed to be clear, but in the video it actually looks more yellow, uh, which is what an icteric sample would look like. Um, and that's caused by... Uh, usually liver and kidney issues. Um, it's a pretty serious thing uh, if you if you see it and it's something that should be addressed right away. It's much less common than um, the other two. Um, so those are the uh, different uh, possible outcomes when you are extracting uh, serum and plasma.